I'm Dr. Katie Lockwood, a primary care pediatrician from Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, and I just returned from the Pediatric Academic Society meeting, which happened in Washington, D.C. this year. There was lots of great learning and so much to see. I do some behavioral health education for our pediatric residents at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, so I attended more of the talks on behavioral health. Luckily, there were a lot of them this year and some great research for us to go over. So the first thing I learned is that the ACGME does have an entrustable professional activity called EPA number nine that focuses on how residents should graduate with competency in the assessment and management of common behavioral health conditions. And although this has existed for a long time, we still have much literature out there to show that our residents want this education and need this education, but aren't quite reaching the competency goals. And so we know from back in 2020 that there were a few studies that showed that residents themselves were only reporting about a third of them being competent in assessment and management of these conditions. And residency programs in terms of their clinical competence competency committees were reporting only about 50% of their residents were competent at the time of graduation. And so much has been done in the years since to try to improve this. While we don't know exactly which educational interventions are going to work, we do know that the American Board of Pediatrics has created an Empower curriculum as well as Empower Echoes, which they are piloting now and hope to standardize some of that curriculum across the country for programs. This is just in time for the new ACGME requirements that we expect to be passed, increasing the amount of time that residents spend learning about behavioral health topics. So lots to come from the Empower Group, and we look forward to hearing more about this in the future, and I imagine they'll be presenting this at PAS meetings to come. Now, there were also some um, AAP presidential plenary talks on the topic of behavioral health that were really fascinating that I wanted to share with you. The first is from Dr. Chua, who is at Michigan, reported some really interesting findings about antidepressant dispensing during the pandemic and showed that from 2016 to 2022, dispensing rates of antidepressants went up 61%. This increase was greater in girls than boys, and we still don't know exactly what the driving factors were here, but we think that probably the COVID-19 pandemic exacerbated some of the rising rates of mental health that we were already seeing pre-pandemic. This is in line with what many of us are seeing clinically. The next talk that I listened to that really um, struck home with me was Dr. Ruiz from Warren Alpert Medical School of Brown University. And Dr. Ruiz talked about the time to treatment for patients who had a new mental health diagnosis in the past month and compared that from 2004 to 2019 for patients who were hospitalized or not. Now, Dr. Ruiz found that if you were hospitalized and you were in an ICU, your time to treatment was shorter than those who were not in an ICU. So 67 days for ICU patients and 85 days for non-ICU patients. And if you were not hospitalized, the time to treatment was even longer at 90 days. So again, likely that some of the care coordination resources that are available to medically complex patients and patients in our intensive care settings helped expedite their time to treatment for a mental health diagnosis that was not their primary reason for admission, but was found around the same time. Very interesting work and look forward to hearing more from Dr. Ruiz. The last plenary talk that I think is important for us all to know is one from Dr. Lennon from Lurie Children's Hospital, who looked at um, gun violence in the city of Chicago. And so what Dr. Lurie found is that one third of children in Chicago have exposure to firearm violence. The extent of exposure correlated with the presence of a mental health impact based on parent reports in a survey. And so what Dr. Lennon argued was that decreasing firearm violence may mitigate the mental health impact of this violence on children. So an important talk that also has many policy implications. So overall, I think we had a lot of great behavioral health content at this conference. Folks um, approached it from both an education perspective, 
kind of a public health and public policy perspective um, and uh, much research to come down the future, I think, based off of all of this work. It was a great meeting. I know I learned a lot and I was happy to share some of our work on behavioral health and behavioral health curriculum with the folks at PAS and we continue to do that in the future as well. I hope to see you all that next year in Toronto. Thank you.